Hello everyone, this is Bradley. Today this is a tutorial talking about the instance on face. You may wonder that uh, this is a feature which is available since 3.0 or 3.1. Why do I still talk about that today? Because there is always a problem of its orientation, which isn't perfectly resolved uh, with previous version. So let's just start. So here we in Blender, and this is a very simple geometry node tree setup. Uh, I'm outputting a procedural UV sphere in the viewport, and I also have a Suzanne monkey head which is facing upwards. And uh, the goal is to instance this Suzanne onto each face of this UV sphere. So normally what we do is we take a mesh two points and put that into the face mode so that we are having a point for each face. And then we point the instance our Suzanne head onto this face. And we decrease the scale so that we can see every Suzanne on every face. Uh, we can use a join geometry to visualize the original UV sphere. Okay, so we can see a Suzanne head on each face. But you can also see the orientation is uh, not. Uh, corresponding to this kind of face normal. So it looks like we need a face and we need to use the align ruler to vector and the plug this normal into the vector and the probably Z into the rotation. But you can see there is no uh, any changes. This is because when you try to turn all this kind of mesh into points, there is no normal being inherited. So in order to resolve this problem, we need to capture attribute Normal is a vector, so we capture before mesh to points and outputting this capture the normal. So now we can see this is Suzanne head has been uh, aligned somehow to the face normal. But we can also see this kind of Suzanne head is oriented in a very weird way on each face. The reason is very simple. Uh, in the past, I've discussed this align ruler to vector node. Uh, basically, what we are trying to do here is to ask our object uh, to look to use one of its axes to look at this vector according to the uh, world origin. So here, uh, my Suzanne is looking at uh, this z-axis 001. But if uh, you think about a different scenario, I duplicate a Suzanne head and I rotate that on the xy plane. Then you can realize this Suzanne head is also looking at the z-axis while they are having a different orientation. And I can duplicate another Suzanne head, again rotate it a little bit, and it's also looking at the z-axis but uh, have a different orientation. So this means a single align ruler to vector node is not enough to really ensure a perfect orientation. You usually need a second vector to define uh, to really lock the axis so that uh, you have a consistent rotation. So this is the concept which is called a face tangent. And uh, if you try to search for a tangent, we only have this curve tangent because face tangent is not uh, really implemented uh, within geometry nodes. And uh, this is, turns to be the problem every time we try to instance uh, an object on face to get the correct orientation. Uh, right now the system is basically just choosing an uh, arbitrary xy axis in addition to this normal, um, that's why we're having this inconsistency. Okay, and uh, in 3.4, we start to have all these kind of topology nodes. I've explained recently in my polygon unfolding tutorial that uh, we are having this kind of a corner of face and uh, vertex of corner and uh, edge of vertex. These three nodes can basically give you an information of edge of face, okay? And uh, with this edge index, we can try to get a field at the index to get its position data. And we are trying to get the edge based on its index to get a position value. So we can get a position attribute of the edge. And we're going to use this information to construct our own face tangent. So that uh, basically we're asking these Suzanne hats to have a new 
uh, vector to lock on a new axis to one of its edge location. So basically this is the idea. In order to construct uh, a phase tangent relative to the world origin, we need to subtract this uh, edge position to its face center. So we subtract a vector which is supposed to be face center. So we subtract the position, but we need to interpolate the domain into a face domain so that it results in a face center vector. So once we subtract that, we can try to plug this result into the vector and then we align to the rotation, you can see there is no any changes. Uh, this is again because uh, when using these mesh two points, uh, we lose all these kind of corner and the edge index things. So we need to capture again, and we capture at the face and plug this vector into the result, plug this tangent into the vector. So we have some changes. There are several problems. One is the orientation is completely wrong. Uh, another thing is I realized uh, this is Susan hat uh, origin is on one side so let's get into center so we can see something more properly and then we can see this kind of weird uh, result uh, this is because when we are trying to get this kind of edge uh, location sometimes it's interpreted differently because different faces are sharing the same edge so the result is a little bit chaotic to resolve that uh, we need to split the edge but also knowing that uh, we are originally working on a mesh that has not split the edge. So to work with that, we need to sample nearest and we sample the face. Uh, basically, this split edge is uh, separating polygons from polygons so that this polygon now has four edges. That polygon has four different edges and these two edges are cut are overlapping to each other. So you make sure there is no interpolation occurring between all the sound of edge and the vertex. So we sample this index and then we sample index so that we are transfer the sampled result. Let's take a vector and uh, its face domain, subtract that and plug that into the vector instead. We no longer need to capture that. So now we actually have a good orientation. And uh, if you want to change some orientation, then you can just use the rotate Euler node and set that to local and rotate maybe uh, 90, negative 90. So now we have our system head being oriented in a correct way because they are not only looking at the normal, but they are also locked on one of the edge uh, in this case. And since this is a kind of a triangles, it's locking to one of the edges, uh, there is nothing I can really help in this case, but else, uh, at least in other places, it looks completely fine. Here, if you look at this entire node tree, it's actually a lot of nodes. And if you're trying to instance a uh, face or whatever other things, you realize it's always a lot of setup uh, related with that. So I made a preset which simplified all this kind of workflow so we can delete all of them. This preset is called face point. Okay, so it's called face point. So it basically converts a mesh to its face, and more importantly, it gives the rotation as we have just done, and uh, we need this Susan head back. And as uh, previously, what you have seen, that you can just uh, rotate the wheel on the local axis to give the orientation back to expected way. So basically this is the idea. There are many other settings, but uh, most of the time I don't think there is any reason for you to worry about that. Uh, you can try to tweak uh, and to get some sort of idea, but uh, usually I'll just uh, keep them as it is. Okay. Um, or you can play around. But uh, this kind of a setting are really just the sort index of this kind of uh, corner of face. It's just some criteria to determine which edge do you really want to look at. Okay, that's the basic idea. And the custom cost is the weight. The reason I renamed that to cost is because uh, lighter the weight will be selected. So I do not really like this naming, but uh, that's basically all about it. There's one more thing I want to mention, however, it's about the scale of our object relative to the face. 
Okay, so looking at our Suzanne, you can go to the item, you can realize the dimension, uh, which is close to one uh, for three axes. Okay, so how can, and uh, all these kind of face are basically like kind of quads, uh, which means like a square. Okay, and uh, for this square dimension is about the two, two, we can make that into one, one, of course. Uh, so sometimes we want our instance to be relative uh, or, or occupying the maximum amount of all this kind of face. Uh, what's the way to do that? There is a node which is called a face area, uh, which can help us to do this kind of function. But uh, this face area is kind of arbitrary. Uh, if you're thinking about uh, a square, uh, the face area, in this case, I have one, one, then it's uh, one. The face area is one but if this is two and two then the face area is four so in order to actually get a kind of dimension of every edge it's actually square root of the face area so if you directly plug the face area into the scale it will be a horrible small amount uh, because if this is 0 0.2 and 0 0.2 then the face area will be 0 0.04 then it will be horribly small uh, so in order to change that, we need uh, a square root. And uh, we realize that does not really help anything. Uh, one of the reason uh, is that uh, uh, we need to capture the attribute because there's a uh, mesh points inside. So we capture points for every face and square root. So if you do not uh, square root, it will be very small, but if you square root, then it will occupy as much as possible. The reason it is still looks like a smaller than the face is because this uh, Susan head, half of the Susan head is mixing um, underneath the face. So basically this is kind of idea. There is uh, another preset, uh, which is doing the face dimension. Uh, this is used when these kind of two edges are not at the same scale because you can see it's not a square as I've seen earlier. It's rather a kind of rectangle. The X and the Y is not the same. Uh, the method is very close. You get a edge length A and edge length B by determining the amount of vertex of every face. Um, but so we may talk about that in further in the future. But for now, I think this is enough when we are working with these face points and the face area square roots. So um, I think that's it. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I'll probably see you next time. Bye bye.